Ryuta Ueda is a Japanese writer director best known for co creating the cult classic video game series Jet Set Radio. A series of games in which players choose a character they most identify with, skate on rollerblades, and tag graffiti across the surfaces of an oppressed city. Jet Set Radio and Jet Set Radio Future are games that, decade after decade, continue to be enjoyed by and inspire fans on an international scale. It is a testament to Ueda's game changing creativity, artistic direction, and his ability to connect with others through the power of storytelling. Join me for an enlightening conversation with Ryuta Ueda as we discuss his life and creative journey into making one of the most memorable video game series of all time. Nara, Japan. For over 1300 years, this city has steeped in rich history and vibrant culture. Sitting on the border of the Kyoto Prefecture, Nara was the capital of Japan from 710 to 794. While many still debate on the origins of its name, it is widely accepted as one of the most important cultural and historical sites in the country. It is a place where ancient traditions and modern aesthetics meet to create the city's unique and unrivaled voice. Ryuta Ueda grew up in Nara, a city that is home to many ancient temples and shrines. This exposure to such rich history and culture had a profound impact on Ueda's artistic development. Through experiencing Japan's ancient culture, I began contemplating deeply about what it means to be Japanese. Where does my identity lie in the realm of art and culture? Contemporary Japanese culture is a unique blend of Western and Eastern influences, creating a complex and distinct culture while taking pride in its historical Eastern culture. Japan has also excelled in assimilating new technologies and influences from the West refining them and creating something unique and different. This is particularly evident in anime and game culture. The worlds of games like Zelda and Elden Ring are not purely rooted in Eastern historical culture. Mario is Italian, and Sonic probably wouldn't exist without American cartoon animation. Even when we look at gaming consoles like the PlayStation and Nintendo, they were built upon the foundation laid by earlier consoles like Atari. This approach towards cultural fusion can be seen as both eclectic and adaptable. Ueda believes that perhaps this could be directly related to the mindset of Japanese Buddhist culture. From a Western perspective, especially from the United States, Many Americans are made to believe that our culture influences those across the world because they are lacking in something. This belief can be tied to the idea of cultural diffusion or the spread of cultural elements from one group to another. But in reality, especially with Japan's relationship with the US, what is taking place is more of a process of cultural fusion or the combination of two or more cultures to create a new cultural form. This can be seen in the transnational impacts of anime and manga influencing art styles and storytelling in the United States and comic books and filmmaking from the US 
influencing arts in Japan. Japanese culture is indeed a rich tapestry of influences, and its ability to absorb and adapt from different sources is one of its defining characteristics. As Ueda stated previously, this is often due to Buddhist beliefs. This includes teachings like the three marks of existence, impermanence, suffering, and emptiness, or absence of self-nature. These three teachings are tied to a worldview and aesthetic that gravitates around the concept of beauty in things that are imperfect, impermanent, or incomplete in nature. This mindset and aesthetic is often referred to as wabi-sabi, a phrase derived from two interrelated aesthetic concepts, wabi and sabi. According to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, wabi may be translated as subdued, austere beauty. Sabi means rustic patina. Characteristics of wabi-sabi aesthetics and principles include asymmetry, roughness, simplicity, economy, austerity, modesty, intimacy, and the appreciation of both natural objects and the forces of nature. Many of these aesthetics and principles are what Ryuta Ueda would later incorporate into his work. As a kid, exploration was always at the forefront of Ueda's mind, from climbing trees and rooftops to character design imagining stories themed around interstellar exploration and roller skating. In the 1970s, there was a roller skating boom in Japan. I remember skating a lot with my sister and of course, getting injured from falling down. <laughs> I enjoyed drawing robots, monsters, and building Lego sets, particularly the space themed ones. I think this early exposure to different forms of art, design, and exploration helped me develop my own unique style. Ueda was also influenced by a wide array of music and art, including rock, punk, reggae, ska, anime, and manga. Some of his biggest inspirations included visionary creatives like Go Nagai, creator of Devilman. Legendary and experimental filmmaker David Lynch. Story dictates everything and so once you fall in love and those pictures form and you stay true to those early feelings, true to the story, you go. It's the same as, as every film. Satoshi Kon, director of anime films like Perfect Blue. French filmmaker Jean Luc Godard. Qui soit juste, oui, mais enfin la critique n'est pas une la critique n'est pas une création artistique, ce sera toujours inférieur. Et les trois quarts des critiques, c'est un état de passage. C'est pour ça que les critiques sont toujours euh, amères et tristes vis-à-vis -vis de vis-à-vis -vis de ce qui même de ce qui loue, de ce qu'il décrit. Japanese artist Shinro Otake. Tadanori Yoku, a prolific graphic designer. And Osamu Tezuka, the godfather of manga. Come on, children. 
I attended a very strict high school. I had many doubts about its system and uniform values. After that, I went to an art university where there were people with various values. It was there that I learned a lot about the importance of diversity. Ueda's interest in art and design led him to study at Kyoto City University of Arts, where he was exposed to a variety of different perspectives. This experience helped him to develop his own unique voice as an artist. I studied photography, video art, and installation art while I was still in school. I got involved in game production as a part-time job. I felt the future in the expression of video games. Shortly after graduating, Ueda joined Sega full-time. Unlike movies, video games make the player a resident within its world. It is an interactive experience, different from a one-sided form of storytelling. Being conscious of how players feel about their gaming experience is highly important and presents a challenge in creative endeavor. Mechanics that encourage users to gather metaphorical elements through their gameplay experiences without relying too heavily on words are indeed crucial elements. They foster a sense of deep engagement and curiosity, making the game experience more vivid and meaningful. Weta's first title for Sega was A Stall for the Sega Saturn, released in 1995. It was there that Ueda was able to put his imagination to the test by producing character models. However, Ueda's first major project at Sega was Jet Set Radio, a Dreamcast game released in 2000 that would go on to become an international cult classic. The game's unique style and approach to storytelling were a departure from the games that Ueda had worked on before, but he was able to successfully bring his vision to life with the help of an immensely talented team at his game studio, Smilebit. We faced challenges because the style and approach of the Jet Set radio games were different from the games we had worked on before. Our team consisted of young members in their 20s with little experience in such projects. However, each member was highly talented and had a great sense of creativity. Despite various difficulties, we were able to smoothly progress with the production, making it an enjoyable, creative process. Many of the members had an interest in street culture and that made it very easy for us to find consensus and work together. For Jet Set Radio, Weta would take on roles that involved art direction, world building, character design, narrative script writing, motion capture direction, audio direction, and voicing the character Potts, the dog. Although Ueda wrote the entirety of the Jet Set Radio stories on his own, he credits the success of the games to the creative collaborations of the team overall. It is important to value the awareness of working together in the process of creation and to communicate effectively, creating an awareness in everyone to strive for excellence. Along the way, his team faced several challenges, including the prolonged delay in obtaining project approval, the short development period, and locking down the art style. The shader provided by the development library was unable to achieve the style of expression we were seeking. It was necessary to have dedicated shaders prepared by an engineer. We had no prior experience with various things such as motion capture and voice recording. 
Ueda and his team would polish up on these skills over the process of developing Jet Set Radio, leading them to be much more well-versed when moving on to develop the second main game in the series. Fly, like a butterfly. Fly, like a butterfly. The shift in graphical style and visual aesthetic evolved tremendously from Jet Set Radio to Jet Set Radio Future as technology shifted from the Sega Dreamcast to Microsoft's original Xbox. Xbox, 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 Xbox. どちら様ですか Emphasis of these technological advances can be seen in the cell shaded style, graffiti, architectural design, and of course, the character design in Jet Set Radio Future. When conceptualizing Jet Set Radio Future, we wanted to do something new. Of course, the advancement of hardware had also expanded the range of expressions that were possible. And you're ready to flow. It was important to include a first person POV camera option for improved control and enhanced immersion. This theme of unity would echo across all areas of creative expression in the development of Jet Set Radio Future. One of the most prominent areas was Ueda's inspirations from contemporary culture from the 1960s to the 2000s, as well as his vision of the future during that time. We chose to blend artistic elements from those decades because we believed they represented the peak of street culture. I believe that music culture is born from the complex interplay of various cultural styles and influences from different eras. Japan, in particular, is a unique country where new and old Western and Eastern cultures blend together. The city of Tokyo is often seen as a symbol of such cultural fusion. Representing a cosmopolitan atmosphere. We wanted to express that aspect through the visual style of Jet Set Radio Future. The goal for the visual style of Jet Set Radio Future was to express a sense of freshness and novelty while still maintaining a sense of continuity with the style of the previous game. Marvel Comics and DC Comics' concept of multiverses had a huge impact on Ueda's perception of storytelling. This inspiration helped him in reimagining the concepts of Jet Set Radio for development of Jet Set Radio Future. When reimagining characters like Professor K, we wanted to create a slightly unconventional image and incorporate a touch of futuristic style. If we mention the multiverse, it would be an appropriate description. Furthermore, Ueda discusses how music culture inspired his designs in the term Rudy's for the characters of Jet Set Radio Future. First of all, there's the music culture. It includes genres such as rock, punk, techno, and others that have a street vibe. Each of these genres has its own musical background. The term Rudy's was borrowed from the song Rudy Can't Fail by The Clash, the song Rude Boys Out of Jail by The Specials, and the concept of Rude Boys and reggae music. I believe that by providing players with a wide range of choices and play styles, players can find characters they can empathize with and feel a connection to, allowing them to immerse themselves more in the game. We also wanted to introduce diversity as a theme, and by offering diverse options, we aim to create a more inclusive and engaging gaming experience for players of all backgrounds. Throughout the story of JSRF, it becomes evident that the city you play in, Tokyo To, is under strict control. Yet, there continues to be a vibrant pushback for the freedom of self expression from the citizens of the city. The oppressive atmosphere derives from a corporation owned by the fictional character Rikaku Goji, a man with an endless lust for control and praise. The citizens of Tokyoto live in a somewhat repressive society, yet they enjoy wearing free spirited clothing and embracing the joy of living. Goji has acquired social power and wealth, 
Still, he becomes envious of people's freedom and various forms of self-expression and tries to make the streets his own. Ultimately, his attempts ended in failure. The Rokaku Group continues to endlessly remodel Tokyo. It is ironic in parallel to Tokyo, given that it is always filled with construction sites everywhere and it never becomes a fully completed city. There is a future for us. Here as we are, or somewhere else. JSRF's boss fights, though simple in combat, were full of sleek, mechanical, futuristic designs for bosses. Considering JSRF is set in a futuristic sci-fi setting, the boss fights were inspired by Japanese robot anime, aiming for grand and dynamic scenes, as well as emphasizing the interplay between street action. In an email interview with Yuichi Higuchi, lead artist of Jet Set Radio and Jet Set Radio Future, Higuchi states, it was my job to create the multi-legged boss mecha and the train type mecha, including design, modeling, and animation. We came up with the ideas based on heavy construction equipment and German train guns. Another interesting side note is about Captain Hayashi, the captain of the Rokaku police. In Jet Set Radio Future, it is Captain Hayashi who controls the mechas during the boss battles. There are also a few instances in which he is fought on foot. When asked why he incorporated Captain Hayashi, instead of bringing back Captain Onishima from the first game, Ueda states, Within the new world setting, I wanted to introduce more stoic characters that would be suitable for the story. However, upon reflection, it could have been possible to include Onishima. In addition to boss fights, Ueda was in charge of the motion capture for character dance moves, making dances in Jet Set Radio laid back, and those in Jet Set Radio Future more aggressive. When motion capturing, Mr. Ueda told the dancers about the concept and asked them to improvise various dances, which we used as the basis for the motion capture. If you know what I mean. <laughs> Here we go. Higuchi was also the 3D artist who created the models for about half the player characters, designed by Ryuta Ueda. With Jet Set Radio Future, Ueda's studio, Smilebit, made an intentional leap toward developing an engaging open world for players to explore. In doing so, they believed the player would feel more present in the world around them. The base of inspiration is from the Tokyo of that time, but each area has different characteristics. We also imagined how it would evolve in the future. We drew from various sources of reference materials, but strived to unleash our imagination to the fullest to create a sense of being present in that fictional world. The city is made up of about 15 different locations, each varying drastically in atmosphere and style, acting as distinct characters in their own right. Majority of the levels were inspired by real world locations. Levels like Dogenzaka Hill and the Shibuya Terminal were inspired by Shibuya a ward in Tokyo, Japan, that remains to be one of the most popular and vibrant districts in the city, often known for fashion, shopping, and its bustling city nature. We included elements such as road signs, advertising, billboards, and public transportation that aligned with the setting. We added details like cars, graffiti, and weathered textures to enhance realism. Another level area named Chuo Street was inspired by Shinjuku, the most populous ward in Tokyo. With over 3.5 million residents, Shinjuku is a major commercial, business, and entertainment district. We made sure to include a diverse range of NPCs, non-player characters. Their presence, engaging in activities like walking, talking, shopping, and working, contributed to a sense of realism and liveliness. 99th Street was inspired by Kabukicho, a large entertainment district in Shinjuku. It is largely known for its countless bars, clubs, restaurants, shops, 
nightlife, and red light districts. Mm, this is 99th Street, the city's hottest nightlife scene, centering around Benton Tower. Here is just one bloody showdown after another, because it's where the mafia kingpins keep their offices. And there's been some bad stuff going down lately, ever since the mysterious power outage. Hmm. And Rapper 99 seems to have made this their home. All right, my people, it's time to give 99th Street a new paint job. In addition, 99th Street also takes inspiration from the streets of Hong Kong with its vivid neon lights and streets filled with lively pedestrians. This atmosphere, among many others, is complemented and enhanced through the careful use of sound design. We incorporated appropriate environmental sounds such as traffic, noise, voices, uh, music, and other ambient sounds. This helped to enhance the atmosphere and create a immersive experience. Other more residential levels like Kibogaoka Hill and Rakakudai Heights captured their visions of what the future of Tokyo's suburbs might be like in 2024. Over the last 11 years, the number of people in Japan has been shrinking instead of growing. And according to some estimates, Japan's population could be cut in half by the end of the century. Japan's estimated to have had fewer than 800,000 births last year. In the 1970s, that figure was more than 2 million. What does the data say? Population fell in all 47 prefectures of Japan in 2022. These settings house homes stacked on top of each other in favela-like atmospheres, while also showcasing settings that were once bustling, but now experiencing a decrease in population. Just the other day, the love shockers of Hikage Street were mixing it up with the noise tank's new toadies, the Immortals. Let's go do something about all that ugly immortal graffiti. Hikage Street is similar in atmosphere to the previous two levels mentioned. Though there is one major difference, Hikage Street seems to be an exclusive spot for couples. Throughout alleyways and various isolated areas, players can find couples together, some simply spending time together, others taking a stroll, and others using these isolated places for other activities. When Ueda was asked what the significance behind this was, he simply replied, <laughs> Please use your imagination. Music just turns me on. Ueda goes on to discuss how the level, the skyscraper district, and Pharaoh Park was conceived by imagining what an Egyptian theme park might be like in the center of the city's highest buildings. The roars of the ancient dragons still echo throughout the playgrounds of the heavens. Sky Dinosaurian Square. Dinosaurian Square embodies a full on theme park with roller coaster tracks for players to grind and perform tricks on. According to Ueda, the biggest inspiration for this level was the Korakuen Amusement Park from Japan's first full scale roller coaster, also known in Japan as Jet Coaster. One of the later levels in Jet Set Radio Future is that of the future site of Rokaku Expo Stadium. Ueda states that this environment was inspired by the Japan World Expo of 1970. Over 70 countries are participating. The Soviet Union has the tallest pavilion at 360 feet. Among the others are Canada, Italy, France, Australia, the Netherlands, etc., etc., etc. And what have Expo's millions of visitors come expecting to see? They've come for new experiences, for a glimpse of the future, a taste of other cultures, all under the Expo main theme of progress and harmony for mankind. This exposition brought in more than 64 million visitors from 77 countries. It was an event with a prominent theme of progress and harmony, or to put it simply, unity. 
It was an event where people could envision the future of the world together. Expo has been described sometimes by itself as the world of tomorrow. If this is what is to come, then many of the buildings are indeed futuristic. Although Jet Set Radio Future has a near-future, artistic, and slightly decadent atmosphere, I was conscious of pop culture and colorful styles. I know when to pay the front line, take the don'ts. Weta was also conscious of strategic placements of shapes throughout the world of the game. That same world is dominated by the Rikaku Group, a mega enterprise with a name that translates to Hexagonal. When asked about this, Weta says hexagons subtly placed throughout Tokyo To were done to symbolize the city being dominated by the Rikaku Group in all aspects of life. Place your bet. Concluding our conversation about the art style of Jet Set Radio, I asked Guida if he was happy with the way it all turned out. Looking back now, I realize that there is room for improvement in my expressive abilities, but I'm satisfied with the efforts that I made at the time. It's natural to feel that there were aspects that could have been improved upon in terms of artistic expression, but I take pride in having given my best effort using the resources and skills I had at the time. Jet Set Radio! Whether you're chilling on your couch or in your coffin, don't forget to tune us in to keep you company! DJ Professor K takes inspiration from the blind DJ named Super Soul, who appears in the movie Vanishing Point. The 1971 American action film, directed by Richard C. Serafian. Vanishing Point focuses on a disaffected ex-policeman and a race driver named Kowalski delivering a muscle car cross-country to California while high on speed being chased by police and meeting various characters along the way. Super Soul is a blind African-American DJ who broadcasts from a pirate radio station in Goldfield, Nevada. He is a larger-than-life character who is both wise and irreverent. He provides a running commentary on the high-speed chase of Kowalski, the film's protagonist, and encourages him to keep going. Super Soul is a symbol of freedom and rebellion, and he represents the counterculture movement of the 1970s. According to the director, Super Soul is based on the real-life disc jockey, Jack Gibson. October the 5th, 1949, on a Monday morning. At 6 o'clock, I flipped the switch and said, Good morning, Atlanta. We are here. <laughs> <laughs> Often going by Jockey Jack or Jack the Rapper, Gibson was a pioneer in the news, music, and entertainment industries. Myself, I was a morning man, and I called myself the morning mayor of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I made all the decisions what's going to happen in Atlanta today. That was my thing. So they said, uh, Jockey Jack, the morning mayor of Atlanta, proceeds and presides over the whole city. I said, good morning, Atlanta. What are we going to do today? And then I tell Atlanta what I want them to do. And I'd work from 6 to 9, I mean 6 to 8, and I'd come back again from 4 to 6. And what kind of music did you have the music segmented? In, in other words, at this time you would play jazz, at this no, no, time no, you no, played, no, you no, mixed no. it all up. Mixed everything. I was my own program director I see. and music director. I played what I thought I wanted to play at the time. Mm -hmm. Whatever hit me. Known as the father of black radio, Gibson pushed the boundaries through innovation, imagination, and fearlessness. Gibson created a path where there wasn't one previously and paved the way for everyone involved in black radio onward. This embracement of individuality and compassion for his community inspired the creation of Super Soul in the film Vanishing Point. The bold embodiment of Super Soul by Clavon Little created a memorable performance that left a lasting impact on Ueda. After watching Vanishing Point, Ueda not only found inspiration for DJ Professor K, but also for the film's themes of freedom, evading the police, and pirate radio. Aside from Vanishing Point, the Jet Set Radio series was also heavily inspired by a number of other films. According to Ueda, films like The Blues Brothers, 
influenced Jet Set Radio through its themes of music, camaraderie, and like Vanishing Point, evading the police. Other films like Wild Style and The Warriors influenced Jet Set Radio's culture and attitude in the streets. Of course, it's street culture. It's also a fusion of inspiration from various sources. The name Jet Set came to mind while I was brainstorming for the game's title and happened to have the Sonic Youth album CD titled Experimental Jet Set Trash and No Star on my desk. I was inspired by the resonance of the words and the imagery of radio waves soaring through the sky during broadcasts. It seems that the name also carries the connotation of wealthy celebrities or socialites. The concept of pirate radio was inspired by the likes of Radio Caroline, a pirate radio station in the UK, and the Clash's song, This Is Radio Clash. Citizen Kane influenced Rikaku Goji's setting. Similar to the story of Citizen Kane, Goji has succeeded at becoming a millionaire, yet he still feels loneliness and disconnectedness. He has been eager to possess something, but it's what the Rudys already have. The 1985 film Brazil influences the game's unique world settings and themes of propaganda, authoritarianism, and manipulation of media. Upon writing the script for Jet Set Radio Future's story, Ueda made sure to put the most important ideas at the forefront. These ideas included individuality and self-expression, unity and friendship, resistance against authority. Although Jet Set Radio and Jet Set Radio Future differ in style and story, their core themes remain the same. Both games feature rebellious characters as protagonists who express themselves through graffiti art and confront oppressive forces. Themes of unity, friendship, uh, self-expression, and counterculture remain consistent and play important roles in both games. Even if the specific circumstances and storylines differ, the core character traits remain intact, providing a sense of continuity and familiarity across Jet Set Radio and Jet Set Radio Future. During this interview with Ryuta Ueda, there was a common theme in his responses. He expressed the importance of allowing things to speak for themselves. I believe it's important not to over-explain. I prioritize what users could feel from the visuals, sounds, and actions within the experience. This approach is one that has not changed since the creation of Jet Set Radio. By incorporating the presence of DJ Professor K as a commentator, the player character was prevented from speaking excessively in an explanatory manner. The goal here seemed to be to leave the perception of the story up to the player's own unique experience, rather than having a main character speak for everyone, locking in a singular experience. While there are differences in terms of the futuristic setting, the JSRF has a slightly more mature atmosphere compared to JSR. The game's art direction, storytelling, and character development may contribute to this sense of maturity. There's a possibility that they also contribute to the more mature atmosphere. While themes such as rebellion, self-expression, and counterculture still resonate, they are portrayed in a way that reflects a more adult perspective. The themes of rebellion, self-expression, and culture are shared by both JSRF and JSR. However, JSRF places a greater emphasis on the themes of unity and friendship. The characters in Jet Set Radio Future maintain their individuality while coming together in unity, supporting each other, and resisting the oppressive rule of the Rokaku group. The game delves deeper into the theme of oppressive regimes and the control exerted by powerful corporations. When reflecting upon Jet Set Radio Future's themes of individuality, self-expression, diversity, youth culture, counterculture, and resistance against societal constraints and authority, Oida expressed, 
It is important to think about what values cannot be changed by money and to act in alignment with them. When asked about what he learned from the experience of working on these games, Ueda responds humbly, stating, If approached with sincerity, it becomes something memorable. Throughout my research and documentation of the development of the Jet Set Radio games, one question always returns. Why has there never been a re-release of Jet Set Radio Future? If there was one person I wanted to ask, it was Ryuta Ueda. The question of why Sega has never re-released Jet Set Radio Future in any form is just as much of a mystery to Mr. Ueda as it is to the Jet Set Radio fans. His personal opinion is that he hopes to see a re-release of it someday soon. JSRF takes place in a fictional setting, so there are significant differences from the actual real world. However, I feel the, the challenges and issues in the world have not changed much. Aspects such as human relationships, societal conflicts, and themes of anti-establishment exist as common elements, regardless of the era or setting. Although he wishes he had taken more time to relax a bit during the development process of the Jet Set Radio games, Ryuta Ueda remains proud of his team's hard work and the immense impact and expansive influence the series has had on other indie games and creatives of all types. When asked what advice or tips he might give to other artists or storytellers, Ueda says, Don't let others sway you. Believe in yourself and value your ideas and individuality. Always have the courage to challenge yourself with new things. Through Ryuta Ueda's own personal journey of challenging himself to try new things, he created iconic characters and memorable stories that have inspired others across the globe for decades. Without a doubt, Jet Set Radio and Jet Set Radio Future will continue to inspire others to push the boundaries of creativity, embrace individuality, and to spread the awareness of the importance of unity. I believe that Jet Set Radio continues to be loved because of the continuous support and passion of the fans. I am truly grateful for it. I am both surprised and delighted to see that even those who have recently discovered the game are showing interest. I'm sure that characters like DJ Professor K and Beat would also be happy about it. <laughs> Thank you all so much. I believe that Jet Set Radio will continue to broadcast in your hearts forever. and identify the beats. One, two, three. But that was too soft. 